Hey guys, it's Kaler. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, I have an auto animate Adobe XD tutorial for you guys. We're going to be creating exactly what you see here entirely in Adobe XD. First, we're going to design this website and its three image sections, and then we are going to prototype it to make it look and do exactly what you see here. This is all thanks to the newest update, the October 2018 update. It gave us the auto animate feature. So that's what we're going to be utilizing in today's tutorial. Let's go ahead and get started. So before we get started, this is what the project file looks like. The link will be down in the description, as well as an image folder with all three images that we're going to be using. So to start off this design, the first thing I'm going to do is drag in my image. So I'm going to create a rectangle on the screen, the full size of our artboard, which is 1920 by 1080. And let's go ahead and remove the border from this. And then we'll drag in our first image. So I'm just going to drag that into the rectangle and drop it in. So the first thing we're going to need to do is add an overlay onto this image. I'm going to do that by selecting the image and hitting Command C, Command V to make a duplicate. And then if we adjust the fill, it will then turn into a solid shape like you see here. I'm going to give this a black fill. Then I'm going to change it to a linear gradient. So I'm going to go to solid color, linear gradient. I'm going to make sure they're both black. And the one on the bottom, I'm going to set to 20% opacity on this slider right here. And then on the darker one, which is up here, is going to be set to around 75%. This is going to darken this enough so that the navigation is visible and the other elements down here is visible as well. So this is a little too dark, so we're going to drag the slider until we get a nice view of our image, which around 45% I think looks pretty decent. So then I'm going to select my artboard and I've named this one 1 and I'm going to turn back on my grid. Then let's type out our logo, which for this, we're just going to call this discover period. I already have the fonts for you guys. I'm going to select the logo and this is Lato and you can get this from Google fonts. Let's position this on the first column and about 40 pixels from the top. Now we can start to create our navigation. So I'm just going to type out text. And then we'll set that to the links text, which is going to bold this. And I'm going to drag this all the way over to the last column and then center align it with the discover. And we'll align this to the right. So our first link is going to be login slash sign up. Then I'm going to hold alt and drag over to the side and we'll add 40 spacing in between them. And I'll repeat this till we have a number of our navigation links. All right, so now I have discover, explore, trips, locations, and then the login sign up. So that's all of our navigation. Next, we need a heading. So I'm just going to type out discover nature. We're going to align this to the left. And then over here on the side, I'm going to select the heading font, which is new wave. And you can also get this from Google fonts. I'm going to adjust this to the first column and we'll do about 550 spacing from the top of the browser. just like that. So below that, we're going to have some lorem ipsum, or you can type out your own body text. So I'm just going to type in a bunch of random characters and I'm going to set that to my body font. So then I'm going to paste in a bit of lorem ipsum. I'm going to turn the opacity down on this to 80% just to lighten that up a little bit so it doesn't clash with the heading. And we're also going to change this to a text area. I'm just going to drag that in until I'm happy. So we'll go with three columns and then just drag that down. And I'm going to go just a little bit wider, I think. So around there looks good for me. So now we need to create some navigation icons. So I'm going to do that with some rectangles. So I'm just going to hold shift and drag out a rectangle, remove the border, and we'll set this to 48 by 48. I'm going to position this 80 pixels below the body text. And we'll make this 35% capacity. And then on the border radius, I'll set that to two. I'm going to hold alt and drag out a copy and we'll put 10 spacing in between the two. And now we can drag out our arrow symbols, which are over here in the symbols panel for you. Drag that one out and then we'll grab both of those and center align them. And then we'll drag out the other one and do the same thing. So the last thing our page needs is our bar. That's going to be kind of our time gauge for switching the slides. So I'm just going to drag out a rectangle, the full width of the artboard, 1920, and we'll set the height to six. 
With that selected, I'm going to align that to the bottom of the artboard and I'm going to turn the opacity to 35%. I'm then going to hit Command C, Command V to make a copy and then I'm going to drag the opacity to 100%. So now we have two bars down here and we also need to remove the border from both of them. So if we select the artboard, we can now turn off the layout grid because that's all the elements we need for our first slide. Now, because we're using the auto animate, we need to make sure that we start to name our elements. So I'm gonna go turn my layers panel on and I'm gonna open up one. So I'm then going to go ahead and name all of my elements. So we'll start with the logo. We'll just call that logo. And it's actually, let's save time. So let's just grab all the navigation elements and then hit Command G and we'll just name this navigation. Next, I'm gonna grab the heading and the body text, Command G on those, and we'll call this text-group-01. Then down here in the bottom, I'm gonna grab each one of my squares and group that with the arrow. Then we'll grab both of them, group them together, and call this arrows. So our background image has two pieces. It has the overlay and then the image itself. So I'm going to grab both of those, then hit Command G, and we'll call this grouping slide-image-01. And I'm naming them dash 01 because this is the first slide. When we go to the second image, everything will be dash two. So lastly, we need to name the bar down here at the bottom and we're just gonna call this time-bar-dash-01 and this is gonna be time-bar. That's gonna remain the same, it's never gonna change, so we'll just name it that. All right, so now that we've organized all the layers, let's make the next screen, so Command-D, and we'll name this one too. I'm gonna select the background image and hit Command-Shift-G to ungroup it and I'm gonna drag the overlay just off to the side. Then I can drag in my new image and place it in the old one, and then drag the overlay back on top. Grab the overlay and the background image and hit Command-G to group them. And we renamed the first grouping slide-image01. So this one will be slide-image-02. I'm also gonna change the heading from discover to explore. And I'll paste in some new lorem ipsum just to change that up a little bit. Now that we have that, we need to make sure all of our layers are organized and named again. Uh, so the time bar this time is gonna be changed to two. The text grouping is gonna be changed to two as well. And we've already changed the image name. So now we are done with this artboard. We can select it and hit Command D and we'll name this one three. Same thing we just did. I'm gonna select the background image, hit Command Shift G to ungroup it, drag the overlay out of the way and the new image in its place, and then we'll drag the overlay back on top. Select both of them and hit Command G. We're gonna name this grouping slide-image-03, and we can change our text, and I'm gonna change Explore now to Enjoy, and I'm also going to paste in some different lorem ipsum. And we need to open up the layers panel and make sure time bar is now named dash 03. The text group needs to be named dash 03. And we've already named the slide image. So now we have all three screens. And one thing I'm quickly gonna do is I'm gonna adjust the opacity on the overlay on each one of these. So this one's gonna be 19%. And let's go with this one to 25. 26 work. And that way they just lighten these up on these two because this one needs to be a little bit darker, but these two don't need to be. So we need to do one final thing before we begin to prototype. First, I'm gonna move all of these stacked on top of each other. And I'm gonna select one and hit Command D. I'm gonna do the same thing for two and three. I'm gonna name each one of these duplicates one dash full, two dash full, and three dash full. Next, we need to select the time bars for each one of the originals and change the width to zero. So I have time bar dash 01, and I'm gonna set the width to zero. So now that each one of our artboards, one, two, and three, have these different states where the bar is filled up, we're ready to prototype. 
So I'm going to head over to that tab. And what we're going to do is we're going to go from one to one dash full. And I'm going to set this as a timed trigger. And I'm going to go with one second. Auto animate needs to be selected. And we're going to change this to no easing. And for the time, I'm going to set this to one second just so we can speed through the tutorial. But for the example I use in the video, I probably set it to two or three seconds. That's probably what I would suggest doing. So it's a little bit slower. But for now, we're going to go with one second. And then I'm going to do the same thing from two to two dash full. Adobe XD remembers those settings. And then from three to three dash full. So now we have these linked, these linked, and these linked. So now we need to move from one dash full to two. So I'll drag that over. And this time we're going to do 0.2 seconds. The easing is going to be set to ease out. And then for the time, we'll do this at 0.4 seconds. I'll do this from two dash full to three. Same settings. And then from three dash full to the start, which is one. Same settings. So now we have an infinite loop. So if we play this, you'll see that the bar animates over one second, switches to the next screen. The bar animates again and then it will return to the start and that will infinitely loop. So real quickly, how this is working is Adobe XD, when you turn on the auto animate, it looks at both the screens, the screen that it's animating from and to, and it looks at the layer names. And if there's objects with the same name, it's gonna look at the states in each of the screens and it's going to animate them from the first state to the second. So for example, here on the artboard named one, we have that white bar down here with zero pixels of width. And then over here, the white bar is 920 pixel width. So it is going to animate from zero all the way to 920, giving us that time bar effect down here at the bottom. And it's gonna do that for each one of these screens. So now that we have this looping from each one of these screens, we need to add the animation of the images sliding on top of each other. So how I do this is we need to grab this image. So this is slide image 02 hit command C, go to one dash full and paste that on. And I'm gonna drag this grouping right above the slide image 01. So it's just on top of it, as you can see there. And then we'll just drag this off to the side. I'll do the same thing for the next one. So I'll grab three and then I'll go to two dash full and paste that in. Make sure it's just above that background image and drag it off to the side. And same thing for the last one. So we'll grab the original image Go to three dash full, paste that in, make sure it's just above that background image and drag it off to the side. So now if we hit live preview, you'll see them slide in. If you have a quick eye, you'll notice that they're changing to white. So this original image that we have here, 01 will change white and this one will slide in. And the reason we're doing that is because when we move from one dash full to two, this original image does not exist over here. So it is disappearing. So to fix that, we just grab that image, paste it in, and then send it all the way to the back. Command shift, left square bracket key. Same thing goes for the next one. So we grab this image, go to three, paste it in, command shift, left square bracket key. And finally for one, we grab the third image, paste it in, and send it all the way to the back with command shift, left square bracket key. So now you'll notice that this image doesn't disappear. There's no white little glitch. And so there is our slide effect of our images. So to animate the text, we'll start with one. So we want explore nature to slide into this one's place. So we need to hit command C and then on one, paste that in. And I'm going to position over here to the right. I'm going to switch to the design tab really quick grab the opacity slider and drag it all the way down to zero. So now that's invisible here. So when we move from one dash full to two, it's gonna change to 100% opacity and slide over. Now we want this to slide out. So I'm gonna grab the original text, command C, go to two, paste it in and drag it off to the left this time, go back to design and then turn this down to 0% opacity. So if we hit live preview, you'll see that one switches over just like that. Now we want to do that for the rest of them. So enjoy nature needs to be on two dash full over to the side with 0% opacity. And then explore nature needs to be on the third screen off to the left this time with 0% opacity. 
then design nature for the first slide needs to be to the right of this text with 0% opacity. And lastly, we need enjoy nature to be to the left of our original and we need that to be 0% opacity. So now if we hit live preview, each of these texts will slide off and fade out while the news text slides in to full opacity. So that is it for this tutorial. That is an image slider in Adobe XD using auto animate. So if you guys want to see more of these tutorials, let me know down in the comments as well as any questions you have on this tutorial. If you guys enjoyed the video, consider giving a thumbs up, subscribe for more design and code related content. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.